Guess what? You know more about the Bible than Abraham. You know more about the Bible than Job. And you know more about the Bible than Peter. Stay tuned to find out why that's true. Hello everyone, my name is Minister Wallace, and again, thank you for tuning in to the channel. Welcome to 2021. We're about to kick off our study in a topic that I think is uh, super important for anybody who is uh, trying to understand, already understands, or just wants to be able to have a clear understanding of God's Word. And I'm not talking about necessarily how to read God's Word, but how it all fits together. Is it one story, or is it just... 66 different stories for those who want to understand it better, who want to know, uh, to, to, to be able to see it in a light of one total story, then this class, uh, this virtual set of uh, uh, lectures, as, as it were, is going to be perfect for you. This is Progressive Revelation. This is based on a book which used to be a class. Uh, this was a class that I took in my undergrad uh, when I was going at Carolina College of Biblical Studies. Uh, it was a class called Progressive Revelation. Uh, but what happened was the, the, the person, uh, Dr. Bill Corver, who was given the class, uh, he decided to put the class into a book form. And that's what a lot of what we're going to discuss and kind of the pattern of how we're going to go is from this book. But before we even get, get started on this day zero class, or day zero lecture or day zero video, whichever one you want to call it, uh, we need to define the term. Uh, that's, that's part of any understanding, any uh, classes that you're part of, any things that you study. Uh, you need to understand what, what does the term mean? What am I being, being, being taught? So I've made some notes to kind of keep me on track. Uh, we're going to try to keep these videos to a shorter length. You noticed I've learned not to say a <laughs> exact amount of minutes, but we're going to try to keep keep them short because I know uh, there's a huge amount of stuff that folks watch now. Uh, I, I and and I know you may or not you may or may not have time to watch an extended length length video. So what is progressive revelation? So first we'll take the first part of it, and I think this part progressive. I think everybody knows what that means. It, uh, it, it's a word that implies that, that something is being revealed over time or something is being done over time. Uh, many of us, uh, or, or maybe just me, uh, many year, year, years ago, I found myself in debt. Now, it just didn't happen all at once. It happened progressively over time, step by step, purchase by purchase. Uh, in, in many things in life, we see it happens that that way. We learn that that way, step by step, bit by bit, piece by piece, over time. So progressive means just that. Revelation. So since this is a Bible study, and we will be the the Bible is the source of this, and the Bible is the basis of this class. Then, in a Bible sense or in a theology sense, revelation is something a truth that is revealed by God to us about something about God revealed by God to us that we could not have otherwise known. Revelation in a biblical sense is something that was revealed to us by God through God's word, but it was revealed to us by God about himself, uh, uh, but we couldn't have otherwise known. Put together, you have progressive revelation. So in a kind of, out of a short definition, it means that God revealed his word to us bit by bit, piece by piece over time, instead of just giving us the entire Bible. And we know that didn't happen, that we just didn't, at some point in history, we got the entire Bible. No, it was over the course of thousands of years of revealed, uh, of uh, scriptures and books being written. And uh, so, uh, letters to churches, poetry, all kinds of stuff. And, and, and then it was uh, done what is called canonized. It was all put into one binder. And as believers, we understand that all of this was overseen uh, by the Holy Spirit. So it was revealed to us bit by bit, 
piece by piece over time. So that means, that means that Adam knew less of God's word than Abraham because Adam didn't have, there, there, there wasn't a lot, if any, I think we could almost argue that there was none at the time. What, what uh, Moses wrote about was his, his, his account of it that was uh, passed down. So Adam, at the time that he was uh, on the earth, there wasn't any written word. So in a, in a, in a, in a sense, Adam knew less about the word than Abraham. Abraham had scriptures of old. He had uh, some of what we would call the Old Testament. Uh, or uh, probably we can guess that possibly the only thing he had was the uh, Torah, the five books of the law, the first five books of the Bible. So Abraham had something. Adam didn't have. So Adam knew less about God's word than Abraham did. So it only goes to say that Abraham knew less about God's word than you do. And we're not talking about of, of, of who God is, but we could, but we're talk, talking about God's word. Abraham, uh, Job, Peter, Paul did not have all 66 books. And we understand as believers, we understand as Christians that uh, the, the, the God's word is, is complete. It is done. So uh, if you get into the mindset that progressive revelation means that uh, there can be some more or some type of addition, well, the first thing you need to hit the brakes because that's not biblical at all. There is nothing else to be added to God's word. But so we, we, we understand that uh, you know more about God's word or you have more of God's word than Abraham, Peter, or Job. They didn't know, they didn't know as much about Christ as you know. They may have known, uh, Adam could have known possibly that it was going to be a seed that would bruise the heel of Satan. Not a lot. Uh, Abraham would have known that there was going to be a savior of some sort. He may have known a general location because as God began to reveal to the prophets uh, starting early on, but as he re big, began to reveal to him of this coming savior, this shepherd, this lamb, but they didn't know much. They didn't know as much about Christ as you and I know. Why? Because we have the fully progressively revealed word by God. So, uh, for a good, solid definition, uh, progressive revelation is the teaching that God has revealed Himself and His will through the Scriptures with an increasing clarity as more and more of the Scriptures were written with an increasing clarity as more and more of the scriptures were written. Notice we have not said, nor will we say, that God changed stuff. He went back and was like, oh man, wait, 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 wait. I meant to say that not everybody sinned. I meant to just say that it was just these folks that sinned. No, increasing clarity. This does not mean that earlier sections of the scripture are inferior quality or are not inspired as later revelations. For example, you, I think as we go, go through, and you're going to see it as we go through the next few weeks here, as you go through a, a, a great example that most folks will un understand, the dietary laws. The dietary laws that God had imposed upon his people in the Old Testament, yes, uh, secondarily, they could have had some health benefits, uh, but primarily that's not what God's intent was. And we see it by his completely revealed word. As we go through his word, we begin to understand, ah, that's why. The dietary laws were more, more so to, it was almost like training or practice. It was to, it was setting the tone that God's people would be sanctified. They would be separated in a sense. There would be things that you would do that 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 not everybody else is doing, and it's it and it may not be for any other reason other than God wants you to be set apart. He wants you to be a called out one, and then we understand that it's not to be set 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 apart to be set away from, but it's to be set apart to kind of like hold up, wow. Why is so and so not reacting to the news or or this and this the way William is? 
why, why is he so, or she so calm? Why, 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 why are they, they're not poking the head in the sand, but why are they more calm and reserved? Because you're set apart, sanctified. So those early di dietary laws were more so put in place so God's people would know, hey, you're going to be different. You're going to be set apart. Not set apart as in you don't co communicate with, but set apart because as God revealed more and more and more and more with the culmination and conclusion of revealing to us his son, the word, then we understood. There it is. Christ was going to be the one eventually that would separate us. So there's one example, and, 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 and that's many, that, that's like um, a lot of the examples we're going to go through as we go through here. So understand now, uh, because I I didn't know it, uh, but uh, Pastor made me aware of some years ago when I first talk, talked about uh, progressive revelation was a class that I was taking. He presented a totally different view of progressive revelation that he had heard. Not This wasn't him saying he believed this, but he was concerned that, oh, whoa, 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 this isn't some stuff to where you, folks can reveal some new word of God no, <laughs> no, I'm not, I'm not naive. I mean, I know that ha ha happens, but let's be clear. This class, uh, this, this, this structured lesson that we're going to go through over the next few weeks, we're only referring to God revealing his word. So this isn't, this isn't God as he progressively reveals more and more of his nature, of who he is. Progressive revelation is exactly what the Bible does. It's God revealing more and more about himself, not us revealing more about God. That doesn't make sense, right? Look, uh, the Bible is not, God's word is not a relay race. It's not a point to where God gets it to a certain, certain point and then he hands the baton off to me to go ahead and add some illumination to go ahead and sprinkle in some more inspired knowledge. No, no. All I can do is try to understand it. All I can do is to try to uh, observe it, interpret it, and apply it. That's, that's all we are called to do. Observe it, observation, interpretation, application. That's what we are called, called to do. There is no R in that. <laughs> we are not called for revelation because it's done. So, Progressive revelation is God is the is the is the just tracking through the Bible. We're, we're going to track through the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. And it won't be scripture by scripture, but we're going to show you how the major themes of the Bible connect together. A lot of times we really don't respect sometimes how incredible the Bible is because and it's not a bad thing, but it's because we don't. We don't, we typically don't get a chance to uh, get some type of structured training that, hey, here's how it fits together. Uh, because most of the time when we ingest it, how do we ingest God's word? Scriptures, single de devotions, our, our church, New Life Bible Church does a, a, a scripture by scripture, verse by verse. That's fantastic. But, and, and, and that's like the advanced level. Most places you just get, You'll get a scripture here, a passage here. You'll get this and this. But progressive revelation during this class, you're going to see, and, and at the end of it, you will understand how the major themes of the Bible connect together to tell one story about one person. So uh, if you hear of somebody referring to progressive revelation as meaning that they, they themselves can reveal new biblical truth, uh, if you hear somebody referring to it as, hey, I have a special word of truth uh, that no one else knows from God's word. If you're ever being told that, uh, well, I have a special observation that I can make from God's word that no one else can make. This is what I want you to do. If you hear any kind of stuff like that and you happen to be in the church or in the place or you watching it on TV. If you're in the church, what I want you to do is I want you to reach and grab your cell, cell phone as discreetly as you can, nudge the kids, tell them get ready because when it's appropriate, y'all need to stand up, throw the finger up if you think you need to throw, throw it up and uh, y'all need to ease up out of there or wait till the end of service, 
smile at everybody and don't come back. In a serious sense, um, we don't want a Bible that I can change, that William Wallace can say, you know what? No, I don't think so. No, I, I think it should read like this. You don't, we don't want a Bible like that, right? So that's not what this, 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 this is. This study, to me, it was probably one of the best uh, classes that I have ever taken. We've done it at the uh, New Life Bible Institute, um, and uh, now we're going to do it virtually online. I, I think it's fantastic. I think for the for the for the spiritually super mature. Bible student is excellent for you, for the person who decided six months ago, I think I'm going to start read, reading God's Word, it is excellent for you too. Probably even more so for you because, wow, it's going to show you how this is one story. This is one story about one person with so much good knowledge, information, and truth, and, and so much revealed about who God is throughout his pages. So, just an introduction, a day zero to let you know we're getting ready to start it. And I hope that uh, you find the time to watch the videos. Uh, and I know that it will bless you, not because I'm doing it, because it's come up from God's word. And God's word has promised uh, that his word will bless us. I cannot bless you at all. I, matter of fact, I can't do anything for you other than to parrot what God's word says. With that, thank you all. Uh, God bless you and have a good day.